This is question 69 through 72 of the New York State June 2015 Chemistry Regents exam. Answer the questions on your own and come on back, check your answers and explanations. Okay, for 69 through 72, we're looking at this equation. We're told that it's the production of urea from ammonium cyanate, and it's a balanced equation. That may or may not be important. Let's take a look. Question 69, identify the element in urea that makes it an organic compound. Well, if you know the definition of organic compound, you have your answer. Organic compounds contain carbon. So your answer here for 69 is carbon. Question 70. Determine the gram formula mass of the product. Well, your gram formula mass, you have to take into account the elements, the number of times they appear in the formula, and you need to get the gram formula masses off of the periodic table. So let's take a look. The product is urea. So let me first erase this so we can focus on question 70. All right. So for urea, what do I have? I have hydrogen, no particular order here, nitrogen, I have carbon, and I have oxygen. I think that take, takes care of them all. Now I need to know how many times they're appearing in the formula. Hydrogen appears one, two, three, four times. Nitrogen looks like twice. Carbon once, and oxygen once. Now I need the masses for these elements off of the periodic table. So, you need to take out your periodic table, and if you take a look, if we first go with hydrogen, normally, I'll say go out maybe two decimal places. So here's hydrogen here, and it's hard to see, I apologize, because this thing is kind of scrunched. Take a look at your um, table. If I just select this and blow it up a little bit, we can see it a little bit better, but it's one point zero one. So if I go back for hydrogen, I'm going to multiply the number of times by 1.01. .01. Now I need nitrogen. So I go back to my periodic table and I'm going to just go ahead and make this smaller. Nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon are all over here so I only have to blow this up one more time and I apologize. So I'm looking now for nitrogen. Nitrogen is essentially 14. Carbon is 12, 12.01. You know what? Let's just round to the whole number. And oxygen, 15.9994, which is 16. All right? So we'll go back. Let's say hydrogen's 1. Nitrogen's 14. Carbon's 12. And oxygen is 16. It really didn't specify in the question how many decimal places to go out. So, you know what, let's make it easy on ourselves and just deal with whole numbers. All right. Well, now I just got to multiply them out and then add them up. And of course, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put it here at the bottom. Four times one is four for hydrogen. Nitrogen, 28. Carbon is 12. And oxygen is 16. And now I have to add them up for my answer. Don't use, um, don't take no, try this again. Don't just do it on paper. Use your calculator. Double check your answer. It's easy to make a silly mistake, and you have the time, so take the time and do it right. When you add these up, what you're going to find is you have 20. So I'm going to carry the 2. So 2, 4, 6, I have 60. So my gram formula mass here is 60 grams per mole. Now, don't worry about significant figures, and in fact, in the answer key, it said don't worry about it. If the answer requires certain significant figures, it will be in the question. You will know when you have to worry about significant figures. Let's move on to question 71. 71 is asking about writing an empirical formula now for the product. Well, my molecular formula for urea, which now let me get rid of all these check marks so we can see it again, right? What do we have? The formula for urea 
is carbon, and then there were four hydrogens, one nitrogen, and one oxygen. Now, an empirical formula means that it's the lowest whole number ratio. And guess what? One carbon, four hydrogen, one nitrogen, and one oxygen is the lowest whole number ratio. I can't divide by a number and not get a fraction or a decimal. So there's your answer. It does not matter what order you put the elements for this. It's just literally you're just going ahead and you're taking the structural formula here and you're making it not only an empirical formula, but it's also urea's molecular formula. And finally, question 72. Explain why, why this balanced equation represents conservation of atoms. Well, what does that mean, conservation of atoms? Conservation of atoms means that you start with a certain number of atoms with your reactants, which is your ammonium cyan uh, cyanate here, and you end up with the exact same number of atoms in the product. The bonding is different, meaning the arrangement of atoms is different, but the atoms on both sides of the equation are the same for the same for the same elements. So that's it. You have, just have to say something like that. There's no atoms lost or gain, or you could say something like I, I'm st I have four hydrogens, two nitrogens, one carbon, and one oxygen to start, and I have the same number in the products. Check out more videos at www.NewYorkChemCoach.com.